The easiest way to get started using the plugin to make your own playable Endless Runner game is going to be using the pre-provided templates that the plugin will come with. There are eight of these by default, and they're all fairly unique to demonstrate different input and control schemes, different game styles, all based on popular existing Endless Runners. These come in the form of both 2D and 3D games, so that you can see how you would implement some flipbook controlled animations or skeletal mesh controlled animations as well. And of course, they come in the form of both horizontal and vertical runner types. So as an example, if you wanted to take a look at how you may get an animated flipbook working, you could go to the flappy runner game type, and this would show you how to set up a horizontal 2D level. The player is a paper flipbook 2D paper sprite, and the scenery is all 3D just for stylistic choices. You could very easily swap this out with textures and static images if you wanted. And this game type also has the benefit of showing you how to set up a target-based scoring system, the target being when you go through those pillars, opposed to most of the other templates will be a distance-based score, so the score will keep rolling for as long as you're playing. Rather than just playing the game though, if you actually navigate over to the Flappy Runner section, open up the map itself, you'll find in here everything that is needed to get this level working from the level manager, the custom player start, the scenery spawners, as well as the road and obstacle spawners. So again, this would be a great way to come in, just look around, see what's already included, see what is referencing what and how the level is set, and you could then take from this and build upon it, replace things, and set the game to work exactly as you wanted. In a similar way, you could come over to, for example, another 2D option is the Lizard Runner, and inside of this we have Lizard Runner 2D or 3D, and this would be an example of the entire game being made of 2D components. So in here, both the player and the level pieces are all 2D, so we've still got the paper flipbook for the animations and then just standard 2D sprites down here for the level. This is a distance-based scoring system, so you could see the score was updating constantly. But again, that's another example of a 2D game. If you wanted to compare that directly to the 3D version, you could come over to the Lizard Runner 3D example. Now the final thing, another one which is very unique, is the Vertical Runner. And this example is here to show you exactly how you would go about getting a level to scroll vertically. So this is actually going up and down. This isn't kind of faking it by flipping a camera or anything. This has movement in a completely different direction to all of the other levels. You can see that here on the level manager, and this will be covered in more depth in future documentation videos. But the level manager here, we can see the movement direction is set to positive one on the z-axis, so we're scrolling that across the screen vertically. I just wanted to mention that because it is important to keep in mind that the movement logic only accounts for x and z movement. Y is always assumed to be forward to backwards, so you'd want to rotate the camera depending on which direction things are moving. That's just been done to keep the update and movement logic as simple and easy to read as possible, so you should only ever need the two axes and everything. Again, all of the examples show how that has been set up to allow for different game types, all using the x-axis, so a completely different game would be our Roadrunner. And again, although this looks very different from the other games, everything's been set up the same way. This is still only using the minus one on the x-direction for the movement, or positive one, sorry, because of the way that the camera's been placed. So you just need to place the camera accordingly to get that scrolling in the correct direction. Another important thing to keep in mind about the templates is that everything has been placed in a specific uh, folder structure. So all of the template games, which have their own unique objects, classes, materials, anything like that have been placed in their own folder structure here. Everything else has been placed in the common assets, including a lot of the base parent classes. So these are things that any project or prototype of the game types will need, so you shouldn't be changing or deleting anything from here and uh, avoiding removing code and things like that from these, as well as any audio effects or materials that are shared between different uh, game types. So these are all going to be things that you'll probably need in your game as well. So these have been put in the common assets, but the other game types and examples have all been separated into their own folder structures, and this should allow you to easily come in, delete any parts of the project that you don't need to keep the final kind of build size down.